Hi, this is Jill from the Northwoods. I'm so happy to have you here. I see every day how people's lives can change. It's why three years ago I started the podcast, Start With Small Steps, and now I have the whole Small Steps empire. But YouTube gave an opportunity to do short videos, smaller topics, talk about things that would help people in tinier chunks, even smaller steps. I think what happens when people try to get their goals is they come up with very large processes, large goals, large situations they're trying to fix. They get frustrated, throw in a little inconsistency, throw in some blunders along the way, some fears, maybe some missteps here and there, and people just get sidetracked. They eventually don't get their goals, they get frustrated, and then they stop entirely. The idea behind the podcast and this YouTube channel is to break everything down into smaller steps so that we have smaller chunks, we can correct actions sooner, and we don't feel like we're ever making such a huge mistake. Three years ago, when I thought about doing a podcast, I didn't know what I would do my podcast on. And then I saw the video from Queen Elizabeth II's 2019 Christmas speech, where she talks about how small steps impacted all of history. And she gives a few examples. The first one was when Neil Armstrong gets on the moon. What a monumental step she is. He said, a giant leap for mankind. But it all started with small steps. Not just his, but thousands of people who built the rockets and did the engineering and swept the rooms and cleaned the bathrooms, everything. All small steps that eventually got Neil Armstrong to the moon. You can't look at it as that final moment. And then she talks about how there was World War II. And of course, World War II had small steps to win World War II. But the important part here is that reconciliation also took small steps. All these nations that fought against each other or betrayed each other needed small steps in order to mend those bridges. And when they had their anniversary of the ending of World War II, those nations came together in handshakes and hugs, all taking decades of small steps to get to that point where there was no more hard feelings, where they could shake each other's hands. And then the last small step she mentions comes to do with how Jesus comes to earth. Mary and Joseph took small steps to bring him to Bethlehem, to bring him to Egypt, to bring him back home, and then all the small steps he takes in his ministry. She said oftentimes that small steps can get bumpy. They don't feel like sometimes you're making progress, but that's what it takes in order to change the world. And so she ends her speech with a quote that sums up everything I wanted to say. And the way she saw it is taking small steps would benefit everybody, ourselves, our families, our countries, the entire world. And the challenges we have going forward, not just with ourselves, but on an ongoing, larger world perspective, is going to take small steps to solve those problems. And the idea of small steps has gone on for a long time. James Clear, in his book, Atomic Habits, but also papers that he writes online, talks about marginal improvement, how these tiny 1% improvements in our daily lives leads to big changes down the road. He says that if we improve 1% every day in whatever it is we're trying to do, we will have 37% improvement by the end of one year. And you can see that in analogies when it comes to weight loss. Even if you take small steps to lose weight, eventually you will get there and you will be less frustrated than if you were to pick a big weight loss goal and then fail at it. If you even just lost a quarter of a pound every week, that comes up to two pounds a month. That would come up to 25 pounds a year. You would be able to make progress, even though it's very small steps. His analogy is he gives about money, that if you saved a dollar every day of your life, you would have $18,000 by the time you were 50. All right, that's fine. But here's the thing. Small steps and marginal improvements get interest. You start building on top of it. And so If you got 1% interest with that dollar example, you would have $23,000 at the end of your 50th year. But if you had 11% interest, you would have $600,000. Compound interest is an amazing thing. And so is compound improvement on whatever small steps you're taking. And not only that particular part of it is when you start making traction in one goal, 
it starts affecting other goals. And so it's not just about money, but your satisfaction, your happiness, your achieving goals in your life improve when you achieve other goals. If you get healthier, you get to go on more adventures on your vacations. If you start organizing your house, the amount of time you spend cleaning your house goes down and you have time to do other things, like maybe write that book you always dreamed of writing. All those steps start building on each other and we start improving, even though James Clear says we may never see the marginal change at all, but when we step back and when we give it time, we'll start to see changes in our lives. And that's really what my podcast, this YouTube channel, a better life and small steps website is all about is bringing those incremental changes so that we can start making progress, improving our lives and finding ways to get past the barriers that are keeping us from the things we really want. Thank you very much. Please subscribe.